I'm Dr. Child, Reader in Cardiovascular Genetics at St. George's University of London in England, and I would like to tell you about the non-cardiological manifestations of Marfan syndrome. Most patients have skeletal, ocular, and cardiac problems, such as this father and daughter who present with the typical body build. However, Marfan syndrome actually affects every system in the body because fibrillin 1, which is the deficient protein, is present in all connective tissue. Starting from the top on physical examination, we see here a normal palate on the left and the narrow, high, arched palate with crowded teeth of a patient with Marfan syndrome. For this reason, Dentists can often be suspicious of Marfan syndrome and refer the patient for a cardiac and genetic opinion. The musculoskeletal system is affected in most patients. And here we see small joint hypermobility in the hands and large joint hypermobility in the knees, which brought the patient to the doctor with knee pain. On the right, we see mild scoliosis. 70% of patients have scoliosis, and it can be rapidly progressive in the teenage years and require surgery. So children with Marfan syndrome need to be monitored from about age 8 to age 16 for spinal curvature. Surgery is available to straighten the spine if necessary, and at present, new techniques for bracing anterior chest wall and spine are available. Another classical sign is arachnodactyly or spider fingers. This is a sign of overgrowth in the skeleton. Here we see a severe pectus excavatum or dip in the chest with a deformity and rib flaring below this can be managed with surgery, placing NUSS, N-U-S-S, -S, bar underneath the rib margin to lift the excavatum. These can be removed at a future date if the patient requires cardiac surgery, but it's probably better to do the cardiac surgery first and repair the pectus deformity afterward. This severe lower sternal pectus carinatum or pigeon chest deformity in a young man may well be amenable to pressure bracing worn between 12 and 24 hours per day as he grows and very good results can be obtained as you can see here. So the before images for the same lad are on the left and the after images after four months of bracing are seen on the right. This means that surgery is not necessary. Other orthopedic concerns are very loose joints, especially in the ankle and foot, which may require fusion of the ankle. Slip disc can also occur more easily than in a normal person and may need back fusion. Often the shoulder or thumb tends to dislocate and must be repaired. The rheumatologist is an important person in caring for the Marfan patient. Many patients have painful joint hypermobility, which can be treated with rest, supports, and medication, usually non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen. About 10% of patients go on to develop degenerative joint disease in later life. And this may actually shorten their working life, so it should be taken into account. Of the children with Marfan syndrome, 70% suffer joint pain, back pain, ligament laxity, and injury. And they must be believed by their parents and their teachers when they say they can't do any more. Well, how do we prevent joint problems? We've spoken about rest, supports, and analgesia. Occasionally, flat feet will require orthotics 
or ankle support boots, flat shoes to avoid knee strain. In young children, tubi grip may be enough to support the leg, and if not, elastic supports can be worn. An appropriate bed is important, and seven-foot beds can be ordered for tall adolescents. Seating and desk at the right height are critical, and the school should be involved in understanding and providing this. Gentle, regular exercise is important to keep fit, but avoidance of traumatic sports is important. If the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories don't work, then referral to a pain clinic to try something such as pregabalin may be necessary. Some sports are recommended, such as swimming, badminton, walking, cycling on the flat, the lighter sports. Some sports are actually contraindicated because they may do damage to eyes, heart, or skeleton, such as boxing, long distance running, trampolining, and so the patient needs to discuss with parents and the teachers at school what is suitable. Perhaps a suitable sport, such as archery, can be substituted for an unsuitable sport, such as cross-country running. All these physical problems may actually affect lifestyle, and the patient will have to be encouraged to try and find as normal a lifestyle as possible. Easy fatigability occurs at all ages, and may actually require a change of occupation or early retirement due to ill health if the patient can no longer cope with the demands of the job. Career choice is important. The patient should choose their area of interest and then choose the quiet end of that area. Living close to work and places of study is important to avoid fatigue due to commuting. Purchase of an automatic car rather than a gear shift is recommended. The patient should pace themselves during the day and take short rest periods if necessary. And they may need letters of support if early retirement becomes a necessity. Connective tissue occurs in the lung, another stretchy organ. Respiratory consequences of chest wall and pectus abnormalities may limit lung function. Airways obstruction, both large and small airways, is common and about 20% of children have asthma. Bullous lung disease may lead to pneumothorax in 11% of patients, usually young adult males. Bronchiectasis and interstitial lung disease affect a smaller proportion of patients. Pulmonary function contributes to sleep disordered breathing, including obstructive sleep apnea. And here we see a picture of pneumothorax in Marfan syndrome with the clear black areas indicating collection of air. If a patient has three pneumothoraces, then surgical prevention of future events should be applied. This is called pleurodesis, P-L-E-U-R-O-D-E-S-I-S. -E -E the eye is affected seriously in approximately 40% of patients with Marfan syndrome. Here we see a dislocated lens and it can be associated with detached retina or lattice degeneration. This dislocation is due to the fact that the strands which connect the lens to the ciliary muscles are made mainly of fibrillin. Deficient fibrillin leads to rupture or perhaps inadequate formation in the first place. This usually occurs before the age of 10 after the age of 10, dislocated lens is quite rare. The lens can be removed and replaced with a lens in the anterior chamber of the eye, and the results are very acceptable to the patients. The ear, nose, and throat specialist may need to give an opinion 
if chronic sinusitis is a problem or if a child has recurrent otitis media due to large adenoids and tonsils. In an era when we try not to remove these, the Marfan child may definitely benefit from surgical removal. Septal deviation can lead to complete blockage of one nostril and should be corrected. And sleep apnea can result from all these obstructions. So sleep studies are recommended and IPPB at night may help the patient wake up refreshed. The gastrointestinal system is affected with irritable bowel syndrome reported in 40% of patients, which is double the normal population incidence. Patients complain of bloating, pain, and constipation or diarrhea. We recommend avoiding wheat and gluten and dairy lactose products, coffee and alcohol. We should also try to eliminate stress for the patient and they should participate in regular gentle exercise. The genitourinary system is also affected with more females complaining than males. There is a higher incidence of pelvic organ prolapse and stress incontinence at an earlier age. To prevent these complications, we recommend minimizing straining at stool, chronic coughing, heavy lifting, and increased body weight. Surgery may be necessary, and then there is a high risk of recurrence for stress incontinence. Colpo suspension and permanent suturing or vaginal tape is recommended for this complication. The neurosurgeon may be consulted if the patient presents with headache, especially headache which occurs when they stand up and is relieved when they lie down. Also back pain may be an indication of dural ectasia, D-U-R-A-L ectasia. The dura around the spinal cord become relaxed and dilated just as the aorta becomes dilated. So duralectasia is defined as enlargement of the dural sac, usually in the lower lumbosacral region, with bony erosions of the posterior vertebral body, known as scalloping. And here we see an example of this dilatation, which can actually lead to peripheral nerve compression symptoms. Psychosocial complications are common. Many children are teased or bullied at school and do not report this. This leads to poor self-esteem, anxiety, withdrawal, and depression, and feelings that they are different and they have no friends. How can we handle this? We can encourage each child to develop their special talents so that the other peer group members look up to them for some particular ability. We can encourage several good friends in the class, and then they are never alone if they are bullied. They have others to stick up for them. We can enlist the help of the school by distributing pamphlets about Marfan syndrome and discussing the matter with the head teacher and the school teacher. Anti-bullying charities are full of good suggestions, such as one called Kidscape in the UK. And lastly, many patients say they would have benefited from psychological or psychiatric referral in early life to teach them coping strategies. This young man at the age of 13 was already six foot four. He had joint pain and so he couldn't participate in rugby or football with the rest of his classmates. His physical education teacher suggested he take up archery because of his long arms. And you can see here that he has won medals. He's champion of the school, the county, and nationally in his age group, and much admired by his peer group, and full of self-confidence as a result. Further support is available. Most national Marfan associations have a telephone hotline and a website. 
online, the Marfan Foundation USA is particularly helpful. Local support groups of patients often are attached to Marfan clinics. So you could ask the nurses if such a support organization exists. Most national organizations hold Marfan Syndrome patient conferences where you can meet each other and share problems and solutions. Thank you.